Welcome to QSR Nation, your weekly dose of food service marketing tips and business strategies for success. Here's your hosts, Josh Anderson, Beth Oots, and Anthony Pierce from the PFS Brands National Headquarters. Hey everybody, welcome back to QSR Nation. As always, we have Josh, Beth, and Tony here from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holtzman, Missouri to talk about food service marketing and business strategies for success. Today we want to welcome back Jeremy Galloway, the, qual- the Quality and Product Development Manager here at PFS Brands. Last week we had a good conversation about consistency and quality assurance. Um, now we kind of want to talk about how that all culminated in some of the new products we launched this year and how that's going to help us going forward. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we did uh, kind of stepped outside of our, our normal um, and actually did a, a decent amount of product launches last year um, between, you know, launching a chicken sandwich, uh, a pulled chicken sandwich, uh, spicy fish dippers, um, even the warm saucing program. Um, that, that's kind of unusual for us to push that out, but we kind of felt like we had a we had a huge opportunity uh, in our market segment to put some really good products. And some you know somebody says, well, you know, a chicken sandwich, you know, everybody has a chicken sandwich. I'd put up ours uh, ours up against you know the the major the major guys out there. So sure, yeah. um, we felt like we had a big opportunity to to really put some really good products that can really help our retailers um, continue to to put some fresh things out there. Um, and especially with some of the sandwich items, you know, a lot of the the portable um, that, that can really help them grow. So well, I tell you, I mean, when you talked about the chicken sandwich being able to be put up against any of the the, the big boys out there. Um, I know at several events that we've had, um, people who've had the sandwich have come up to me and said, this was the best chicken sandwich uh, I think I've ever eaten. And, um, you know, there I asked him, one of my friends, he's, he, there's a certain chicken place that he frequents often, and I said, well, why did you say you know, against theirs? And he said, I, he said, his opinion, he was better. And, um, you know, I mean, the fact that the whole sandwich is over a half pound, you know, to begin with, I mean, huge piece of uh, chicken breast on there. I mean, how, how many ounces of pre-cooked? Uh, so pre-cooked were just over five ounces, just the filet on its own. Yeah, so I mean, that's just a huge piece of, uh, of meat in there. I mean, it's, but the whole thing with the uh, warm saucing program to be incorporated with that so they can have it, you know, whether it's just plain or, you know, teriyaki or the, the um, man and orange sauce or, you know, the southern barbecue. I mean, a lot of variations and opportunities there. And then, of course, Spicy fish dippers were one of my favorite rollout items. I mean, I, it was it was like dipping fish in Louisiana hot sauce type of uh, flavor with it, and uh, then leading to the first non-fried. Uh, product is that right with the pulled chicken? Yeah, I mean it, when you look at major items, you know obviously sides not included. Yeah, the pulled chicken. Um, you know we a part of this part of this process and every single one of those items you know we took through the process. We kind of listened and, and looked at the market. You know, listened to our customers, listened to our uh, our uh, you know franchising committee of our key franchisees, and you know a lot of this came from them. So. Uh, we put them through the ringer. We did our market research of what was out there, um, looking at some of those major major chicken places and their chicken sandwiches, and trying to determine, okay, how do we make ours um, make ours a better value, a better product than theirs? So we did that with with each of those items. Yeah, with all these new products too, um, you know, you got to kind of warn, worry about maybe overloading the retailers. But we have a full demo kitchen in here, and you develop all the SOPs for that. How, tell me how that goes into increasing profitability at these locations. Yeah, so with with each item, you know, really the the procedures start with me. Um, you know, we've we've got to we've got to really run it through the ringer. Um, so as as we're developing the products, you know, I've kind of got that in mind of okay, how are retailers going to be able to do this as well? Obviously, when we can keep procedures. Um, just as close to what the retailers are currently doing as possible. It makes it that much easier. Um, you get that much more buy-in from retailers because we're not overcomplicating things. But um, with the procedures, you know, we'll, by the time we come up with a final product, I've got an idea what the procedures are. Then it's just putting, you know, pen to paper um, and running through and then taking the procedures and actually doing the product again, making sure that, okay, is, is what I'm saying in this procedure, somebody who's looking at it fresh for the first time, can they understand what's going on? Um, and then that's also, you know, working with our training department and our uh, field operations staff to 
uh, making sure that that they understand it as well. Um, because the reality, the the easier we can make things, the more straightforward the process, the more consistent the end product will be. Yeah. So sure. tell us about, you know, whenever we do develop these products, we have to add them onto the menu. Mm -hmm. And about the compliance and everything that the retailers typically they have to worry about, we kind of take that burden off of them. So tell us a little bit about that system. Yeah, so you mentioned compliance. I, I, had, a, I had a call last night um, from some of our field staff just kind of wanting an update on where we're at with the menu labeling law as part of the regulatory, as part of the Food Safety Modernization Act. So, um, you know, with that, uh, we've actually designed a proprietary uh, system called our menu development system or MDS um, and in that system it not only um, is our place to build menus so show retailer costing uh, menu item costing margins but it also pushes through all of our nutritional information which um, is that is a major part of that menu labeling law so um, within that you know it's it's a multifaceted you know we've got to have the product finished before we can have any of that information but it really starts outside of MDS where I'm building raw ingredient data um, transferring that to recipes um, some people like to, to you know, kind of call that I'm, I'm cooking the product inside the system. So now it's a recipe. So now it's one chicken tender and taking those, you know, we call them finished goods, taking those now outside that program, pushing them up to our menu development system. And in our menu development system is actually where we build the menu items. So the item that you would see on a menu that's a two piece chicken tender meal. Well, we've had to outside that put in the tender the breading, the batter mix, all of the sides, everything inside the menu development system is where we put the two tenders, we put two sides, we put the biscuit, we put the dipping cup, we build all that and then actually add it to a menu. So that menu development system is a is a key part in not only being able to accurately convey retailer margins, but in promoting that consistency of how things are built mm -hmm. uh, the same way across all of our all of our locations um, and and conveying that nutritional information not only calories but you know things like sodium and um, vitamins things like that that have to go along with the the menu labeling law that that menu development system is a key piece yeah we we use the menu development system a lot just in marketing in general because whenever we come up with the different promotions our national promotions that's how we determine your margins because we want to make sure that they're going to be getting the best margins possible at an aggressive price point that's going to lift those sales so not only to use it in quality and assurance we use it on the marketing side just to make sure that we do have a well-rounded program for every single one of our retailers on champs coopers private label everything yeah i think in that system we're we're closely approaching I want to say close to 700 individual menu items inside mm -hmm. that system right now and and if you look at a menu you go well I don't see that many menu items we we're we're building everything that we can think could possibly be used so well and you mentioned the compliance you know and of course they had a pushback and everything but we were actually ahead of the curve we were ready um, well before the original you know launch date of that before the rollback happened you know and and so I mean that's got to be you know comforting for retailers to know that they've got the nutritional reports, they've got the caloric information for the menu updates, you know, and as things change, you know, or a new item gets added in or whatever. I mean, those things they're not having to worry about that because they'll be in compliance. And you know, when they get that new menu, it's got the caloric on there. They have a nutritional report that they can keep and you know hand out if they need. And they can order extras, etc. But you know, having all that in place, I mean, how how has that kind of changed? Do you think our landscape? with compared to you know pre one you know, of the label law yeah so you know one one of the things it does is it gives consumers more visibility now we're a fried chicken company and and that's kind of what we started as so um, fried chicken is not not going to be necessarily the uh, the healthiest of foods um, however giving our consumers that information gives them that option to make that choice um, and you know it hasn't hurt us it's only helped us um, Frankly, it's, it's another step in the process before we can actually, you know, launch a product. We've got to go through hours of testing. I mean, my, my team and I have put in hundreds of hours of testing just to even get the information to be able to put into the system. Um, every time we launch a new item, we have to send it through its, its testing regimen um, just to get all of the uh, nutritional, caloric, all of that information. But it, it's, it's all to um, really, it, it came about to be compliant um, but it, it just gives our consumers that visibility that, you know, here, here, here it is. It, it's in front of you. Um, you know, we want to give you the option and give you as much information as we can about, about the products we're serving. 
Yeah, I mean, as a real life example of that, we announced Blue Taco two weeks ago. So you want to talk about some of the research and product development that went into that? Absolutely. So, you know, that that was, you know, I think I've stated before, that was our chance to kind of start from scratch, uh, really determine what we want in a new program as a total total new segment. So um, we, we did a lot of research before we ever even started developing products. Um, first thing we did is we kind of put together a committee um, comprised of internal and external to kind of steer the ship, so to speak, on the on the Blue Taco program. Um, we parsed it off on, okay, you know, certain people were going to be conducting market research, trend setting information with, you know, third parties, um, you know, paying for studies, things like that, uh, really gathering competitor data, uh, you know, and then ultimately what kind of program do we want? That's really the first mm-hmm. key uh, key thing we needed to, to determine is, okay, what do we want this program to be like? Um, because there are, you know, I mean, it's not like Mexican is a, a foreign concept um, out there in the food service world. So after we did all of the, you know, we looked at all the data, we looked at what direction we wanted to go, our distribution model, what our retailers were asking for, um, we kind of determined we wanted the, the general program to be a, a build your own program. Um, something that gave our retailers flexibility, uh, but also gave the consumers that flexibility as well to build it exactly how, you know, build that menu item exactly what they wanted. So, um, and, and part of that research project was once we determined the direction we wanted to go, um, our marketing director and I, we actually took a product ideation tour. And so we were trying to determine, okay, when we're setting items, um, we don't want to be behind the curve. You know, that's part of trying to determine what trends are out there. And so we tried to look, okay, where where could we go to not only get a picture of authentic items, um, but who might be ahead of the trending curve? And so we kind of looked, okay, we think we need to go out to the West Coast. Um, you know, when, when a lot of L.A. is, is really... Um, First, you know, that's where a lot of the trends start. So uh, we actually went out to Los Angeles um, and we went to New Mexico um, as kind of that New Mexico, a lot of green chilies, um, a lot of that, you know, Tex-Mex infusion. Um, They have their own take on on the Mexican program. So um, we did a a full product ideation tour and the whole goal was to come out with, okay, what are some ideas on on, uh, how the program should look um, from a marketing aspect, from in-store, what types of products do we want to offer, knowing that we want to make them fit inside this build-your-own mm-hmm. concept? Um, we came out with some with some really good ideas there. So tell us a little bit about the offerings that Blue Taco is going to have then. Yeah, so you know, with with that, um, the whole build-your-own concept, we've obviously got our, our proteins, um, some of our hot you know hot items. Um, so we're going to have a beef, a pork, a chicken. Um, we have our rice and our beans. We have some of our cold items with our salsas. Um, you know, we're going to actually have a, a, a green chili, a chopped green chili. Um, it's a, a kind of a unique product to roll out nationwide. New Mexico, they're, they're known for those, but we're going to push that out really nationwide. Um, but when we, were, when we were really developing this, we wanted to say, okay, what was going to set us apart? So we tried to find what we wanted our key differentiators in, in the whole program to be. Um, the first thing that you look at is we've developed um, our soft shell tacos are actually going to be using a blend of blue corn and wheat flour. Um, so what that does is it gives you that good bite, that elasticity that a lot of people are used to with wheat flour tortillas, but you still get some of that sweeter flavor um, that you do from a corn tortilla. That's one of the authentic things that um, when you look at tacos, uh, the, the more authentic ones, it's always corn tortillas. Um, so we wanted that sweet corn, um, and then that blue corn really adds an attractive blue look. So. That's one of our first key differentiators. Um, The other thing, you know, the the next one would be our proteins. So one of the things we found through our market research um, is a lot of places, there wasn't a whole lot of flavor in the proteins. Um, Everything was built upon everything around the proteins, and which kind of struck us as odd. We we didn't expect to find that. So we said, okay, we want our proteins to deliver um, vibrant, different flavors, each one. And so we, we think we've gotten there with our barbacoa, Um, which is our beef, our carnitas, which is our pork, um, and then our citrus chicken, um, which is a really, um, really bold uh, cilantro lime flavor. So um, that second one is our proteins. The next key differentiator is really going to be in our flavor of our salsas and our warm sauces. Um, I'd put these up against, you know, anybody's out there that are even making them fresh in store. Um, Whether our two salsas are going to be our honey habanero salsa, which is going to be a little more on your, your medium to hot side. And then our verde salsa, um, which is your mild, um, your tomatillo-based salsa, 
Um, and then our warm sauce is in your queso and your, your green chili sauce. Um, and so that kind of leads into the last major differentiator is our concept is we want you to be able to warm sauce anything. So we want you to be able to put queso or green chili sauce, which will be served warm, on the top of any burrito, any bowl, any taco, and you can do a combination of both. And that just adds that, that next element of flavor that could totally change um, how you make your bowl, you know, that, that flavor um, pairing. So. Well, I'm hungry now. I know. Is yeah. anyone else <laughs> I can think like, it was the barbacoa. Man. <laughs> it was so good the other day. I mean, I mean, but what I really loved about the way that the products have flown together is, so, you know, when I, when I was in there uh, doing my build your own, because as a consumer, I love choices. And, uh, you know, so I had the barbacoa and the cilantro lime rice, and, you know, they had, um, I like the pinto beans, and then we got, you know, black beans too, but, you know, had those in there, and then. Now I'm getting myself really hungry, but you know, I mean, the honey habanero, I load up. I mean, that has been my favorite, um, absolutely favorite salsa that I think I've ever tasted, and I've uh, I've tasted a lot. For those of you who've seen my photo, you know I'm not lying. This fat kid loves to eat, and, and that, that honey habanero is awesome. I mean, and I just loaded it in there, and you know, the the flavors were so great because not only do they meld well. But I can still have individual flavors as I was eating. You could taste the barbacoa. You could taste the cilantro lime. It wasn't just mushed together. I mean, it was really, really good. I'm, I'm, I'm super crazy excited and super crazy hungry now. But I just <laughs> think you're super crazy sometimes. But, uh... And they're super crazy. That's right. <laughs> I think you forgot to read on the invite that you're supposed to bring food samples Is that with Is you. that the way yeah. it's supposed to go? I missed that. It, it, was, so. it was on the PS <laughs> portion of the invite. So. Well, I, I, I appreciate it. I know we're, we're all really excited and, and, and we're really proud of the product that we're, we're going to be putting out there. And so um, we've already had, you know, had some talks with some retailers and wholesalers and they're excited about the program as a whole. And, you know, the, the ones we've been able to get the product in front of now, it just it just elevates that excitement because they they get where we're going with this. I know. We're all super excited. Yeah. And you can definitely look for Blue Taco the first quarter of 2018. Um, do you guys have any other questions for Jeremy? Where's the tacos? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that for next time. Okay. So, uh, Jeremy, thanks for being here for sure. It was, a, it was a fantastic conversation. If you have any questions for Jeremy or any, but any other marketing or business questions, please reach out to us at mdf at pfsbrains.com. And until the next time, for Josh, Beth, and Tony, and Jeremy, thanks Thank for you. stopping by. Stop by next week for another QSR Nation episode or visit pfsbrands.com.